Hi guys, in this video we'll be going through how to make this simple house over here in Blender 2.8. Perfect for beginners of Blender 2.8 and also perfect for beginners of 3D modeling. So I first started off with a default cube and then I used a measure tool to measure 3 meters. But since that's about the height of an average house. I then extruded the top face and then scaled out to start creating the roof. I then extruded up a bit more to give it a bit of thickness, then added a loop cut right in the middle, selected the middle edge and pushed it up to give a basic shape of a house. I then went over to Blender 2.7 uh, because this add-on is not available in Blender 2.8 yet. Uh, I used the Archimesh add-on that's available in Blender 2.7 to quickly create windows, doors, um, a roof and uh, Venetian blinds. There were handy sliders that I could use to quickly modify what the doors and the windows would look like uh, very very easily because I'm quite lazy I don't like to model uh, everything from scratch I just like to use a, a plugin if it's available because in reality all of this stuff is relatively easy I feel like a window and a door you can make uh, just by extruding uh, a cube a bunch of times so why waste valuable time when you'd rather just do the fun stuff? So then box select everything, hit Control G to create a group and save it as something like house stuff. And then back in Blender 2.8, I uh, appended, which is now called a collection, uh, called house stuff. Um, and then I just placed each of the elements uh, to fit where I want them to fit on the house. Oh yeah, I went into the house model itself and separated each face of uh, the walls so that they become its own object. The reason why is because I wanted to give the wall a bit of thickness. Uh, and, the reason, and the reason why I want to give the wall a bit of thickness is because when I put the windows in, I want to be able to cut a hole into it. And the way I did that is using the boolean modifier. And then make sure when you use the boolean modifier that you change the type not to different, sorry, not to union or intersect. I think it should be different. Sometimes the boolean modifier doesn't behave like the way you want it to. So I went ahead and applied the, uh, the boolean modifier on that wall. And then I just selected the faces where the window was cutting and then just deleted those faces. I then added another window to the back of the house. I guess just so that I could uh, get some light coming through. And I pretty much did the same. I selected that wall, added a boolean modifier and selected the control uh, ctrl dot hole dot zero zero uh, the number of that window and then it, uh, it just worked I guess the door is not so important but anyways I, I still went ahead and added a boolean modifier to the door as well the roof was quite easy I just uh, aligned it to uh, the top of the roof and then there were some built-in uh, array modifiers from the Archimesh add-on. So I just reused that and then filled out the entire roof quite easily. So yeah, I increased the number on the X and the Y and then it just worked. So finally what I'm doing to finish off the house model is I'm adding a plane uh, and then subdivided a lot of times. And then I selected the uh, ver some vertices and then with proportional editing selected, I moved the, the part move some vertices up to create this sort of a hill look so it was quite quick oh yeah I realized at this point I forgot to add the Venetian blinds so I went ahead and uh, put the Venetian blinds inside the house like so I also went ahead and added some uh, bevel modifiers to the, the house just to smooth everything out so now I went to cgbookcase.com to find a nice uh, wall texture that I could use for my house. I started off using a brick texture. Note that all textures on cgbookcase.com is free, CC0 license, so you don't even have to, technically you don't even have to um, uh, give attribution, uh, but I'm gonna give attribution to them anyway, because they're awesome for giving it away for free. So here I changed the world settings of my render. Uh, I went ahead and used a HDR image uh, for my world. I then went ahead and added a uh, vector mapping coordinates to change the uh, rotation of my world. 
Next, I went ahead and grabbed some textures that I got from cgbookcase.com. So mostly the base color, the a, uh, sorry, the height map, and also the roughness map. I then went ahead and connected it to the um, relevant slots in the uh, the principal shader for that for the walls. Made some adjustments to the model as well, just to get rid of those um, those extra those stretched lines. I then deleted all the default textures that came with Archimesh add-on and then I just uh, redid the textures. So for the window I think I ended up making it a basic glass. It looked quite funny in Eevee. So I realized uh, I needed to turn on screen space reflections in the material settings and also in the uh, render settings. Uh, at this point I, I went ahead and grabbed a texture that I could use for the ground as well. I did pretty much the same thing. I downloaded the uh, the base color texture, I downloaded the height texture, and the uh, roughness texture. I think that's about it. Then I went ahead and dragged and dropped them into the shader editor while I'm in the shading uh, workspace of Blender 2.8. And then literally just connected the dots, connected the base color to the base color slot of the principal shader, the, uh, the roughness to the roughness shader of the principal shader, and the height into a bump mode. Uh, but I think for this one I went ahead and put it straight into the displacement mode. And then here I think I'm adding a color ramp to uh, sort of define where I want the, um, how wet I want the ground to look. Now at this point I think my color scheme felt a little bit odd. I didn't quite like the colors. So I think I went ahead and instead changed it to a stucco kind of a texture. This whole time I was working in the EV rendering engine, so now I went ahead and changed to the Cycles rendering engine, because Cycles tends to give more, more awesome looking results. I mean, I haven't yet played that much with EV, it's still quite young to me. Um, I, there's a bit of a learning curve that I need to go through, but uh, for now I'm comfortable with Cycles, so I went ahead and stuck with Cycles. Oh yeah, I also changed the ground texture to a more grassy texture. Then I just played around with the color management uh, section of the uh, scene settings. Make sure you select the filmic type, not the sRGB type. Filmic gives you much more realistic results. If you want to aim for photorealism, choose filmic. It's a bit of a long topic to go through, but uh, just to give you the gist of it, um, Filmic offers you a much higher high dynamic range compared to sRGB. So at this point, I started to get my final render. Oh yeah, maybe I realized here I wanted to add another window. Just to make the scene a little bit less boring. And I, uh, yeah, same story. I went ahead, selected the, the wall, and then added a Boolean modifier, made sure the type was uh, difference, and then the window was pretty much done. It was in place. And that made the scene look just a little bit more interesting. So now I'm just playing around with the world settings to try and make the sun more brighter. So I added a multiply and an add node and combined it with the original HDR image and then plugged it straight into the uh, background node strength. So the multiply node made the sun more brighter but the overall world a lot darker. The add node uh, just helped to bring the world to make it look more lighter. And then after rendering for a while I ended up with a result like that. So to finish it off I went to the compositor, I added a lens distortion, uh, I also added a Dispeckle node to get rid of those little white fireflies. I added a Glare node to give it a bit of a gloomy effect. I also added a bit of a color balance to give it that sort of cinematic kind of a look. And I think I was experiment. Uh, I'm not really experimenting. I think I just went ahead and added a vignette to the uh, final render. And turned down the strength a lot because I don't want to go overboard with that. And I think at this point, I managed to complete my render. I 
continue to play around with the color balance settings and I also I think at the end I added a hue saturation node to increase the saturation and increase the contrast a bit. So this ended up being my final result. If you like this style of video please let me know and please also like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.